The golf playoffs are here. It is week one of the PGA FedEx Cup. We're going to TPC Southwind for the FedEx St. Jude. Welcome to Tea Time, everyone. I'm Andy from wagertalk.com, being joined, as always, by my fellow golf betting expert, Nick Borman from wagertalk.com. Uh, no time to waste, Nick. Let's just get right into the course. We're playing at TPC Southwind, and, I, you know, weather was the big story last week, and it, it sure wreaked havoc. Um, I got to say, I think weather's going to be another big issue this week just because of how freaking hot and wow. humid it's going to be there. Like normally you don't really talk about heat as like a big story. It's going to be pushing a hundred degrees. It's going to rain a little bit on Wednesday to really fire up the humidity for the next couple of days. And they might get a little <laughs> rain on Friday, which will make it even more humid. Um, I, I think it's going to be a little bit of uh, uh, not really talked about a lot, but this is going to be a pretty big ask of these guys to go four days in the sweltering heat. Um, I will just say, uh, don't wear white pants, guys. Uh, <laughs> if you're playing <laughs> this week, we're going to be able to see a lot. Uh, but the course, TBC Southwind, it's another par 70. Uh, it only has two par fives, but, man, are they gettable. They're pretty short. Like, if you yeah. hit it in the fairway, you should – really, really be able to take advantage. I think if you're going to want to win this tournament, you're going to have to go minus six or better on the par fives. Uh, there are seven par fours that are 450 plus yards. The rough is pretty thick. Um, this is not easy rough to get into. You're going to have to really hack it out of there. A lot of water. Um, this is not like a course where there's water, but it's like, yeah, it's not really in play. A lot of holes where water's really close to the fairway, really close to the green. Um, I, I count 11 holes with water hazards that are in play. And I think this is really a tee to green type of course. The greens are pretty small and you cannot be wayward off the tee because of these, these short greens with the water. I think you're going to see quite a few guys end up um, with some water balls. So um, putting, eh, I'm not really looking uh, towards putting stats this week. I think it's going to be the guys that hit the fairways and hit the greens, and that's going to end up being your winner. Probably in the low teens is is where I'm at. I just don't think this is a course that you could really get super aggressive and overpower. Um, I would be worried about someone like Roy McIlroy, who tends to overpower courses and doesn't, you know, some, can sometimes put himself in some trouble. But I think this is a really, really good course for them to start off the playoffs, and uh, this is really going to test your uh, your drives and your irons. What's your take on TPC Southwind? So I dug into it a little, uh, quite a bit, kind of looking at the past couple of years and uh, seeing kind of where the trends are as far as who's played well, what the winners are. There is a, I mean, it's only two years that the, this, I mean, this tournament, let's be blunt first, it's been played on the tour for a long, long time, but it's only been used as the opener for the FedEx Cup <clears throat> for the last two seasons. So the course itself, as you mentioned, the big thing for me is, <clears throat> I think accuracy off the tee is trumping the distance need this week. Distance is always going to be a benefit if you can find the fairway. <clears throat> but these greens are really small, Andy. They're 4,300 square feet. And if you don't have any comparison to that, average on tour is usually between 5,500 and 6,000 square feet. The smallest on tour is Pebble at 3,600. And this is 4,300. So they are small greens. These, this is ranks in like the top five uh, smallest greens these guys play all year. The rough's pretty thick. As you mentioned, it's going to be, there, there's been some uh, good weather, I guess, for growing rough leading up to this. So it's thick. And if you find, miss the fairway, yeah, you might get a club on it, but just because the greens are that much smaller, it just puts much more of a premium on getting it in the fairway so you can find these greens. So I'm looking at guys that are very good as far as ball striking goes. It's always important, yes, but as far as distance, not too worried about it. And honestly, poor putters are fine here. What usually you'll find on a small greens is that poor putters, that, uh, that you know, deficiency, let's call it, is kind of negated because if you think about four rounds of golf, those guys that are a little bit better ball strikers might just find the greens two more times a day, right? So maybe eight times more over the course of four rounds. And that alone is enough to make up for poor putting while other guys are trying to scramble uh, a little bit more than them. So, and if you look at the winner profiles here uh, in the last two years in this FedEx Cup playoffs, you got Will Zelatoris. I mean, come on, ball striker, horrible putter. Lucas Glover, ball striker, horrible putter. Will Zalatoris is the cream of the crop, but obviously, who does that point to? Of course, this week, yeah, Scotty, obviously, uh, but certainly not going to be turned on by betting a plus 350 outright. So don't hesitate to jump on the without Shefflin markets this week because you don't want to get beat by that guy. But it, it does prove that, you know, you don't have to be a good putter. It's not as important this week. You don't want to 
necessarily just <laughs> avoid good putters, but I think what's more important is guys that are accurate off the tee, they're going to find the fairway, uh, and guys that are pretty good uh, with their irons. So form always important as well. And honestly, while those you know attributes highlight those guys pretty well, their form going into that tournament is what was really important. So Lucas Glover had just won the week prior, right, at the Wyndham Championship. So that was back-to-back -back wins. He also had three top sixes, top six finishes in his four starts prior to the Wyndham. So the guy was red hot. You could, you could see his, his good play coming. Zalatoris, similar, though he didn't win. This was two seasons ago. He had six top six finishes and 12 starts leading up to the Wyndham. And you, it was just a matter of when was that breakthrough finally going to come because he was looking for his first win and everybody knew, you know, eventually it was going to get there. So it makes a lot of sense. you got to be hot. you got to be uh, very – you know, in form, and then you got to have uh, a little bit of uh, ball striking ability. And the last thing I'll mention, Andy, I, I mentioned this last week a little bit, but I didn't have the numbers in front of me. So there's there's been 14, I'm going to call them big tournaments this year. So that's the combined total of the four majors, the eight signature events, the players, which is not a signature event, uh, and the Olympics. So 14 events, 11 of those winners ranked inside the top 10 strokes gained over each of the last three, six, and 12 months. That narrows the list down of potential winners this week to, of course, the top four, Scheffler, Shoffley, McElroy, Morikawa, and then Fleetwood and Henley are the only other two that fit that list. So 11 of 14 of these big events have been won by the best players in the world, uh, while only eight of the other 26 events on tour this season were won by the top 10. So I'm really trying to dive into this. You know, it's 50% in the long run as far as the top 10 strokes gain. We'll get into that in a second. But uh it's important to note that these big tournaments are usually won by the big guys. So that's my notes for here on who I'm looking for and kind of who I'm targeting as far as attributes go. And uh, yeah, I agree with you. It's, there's not a lot to the course. It's, it's keep it in play. Uh, hit these small greens and you should probably do well over four days. But yeah, this reminds me of Southern Hills where Tiger Woods won the tournament because he was the only one that didn't, for lack of a better way to put it, die after four days playing in that heat. This very well could be just like that this week. Yeah, um, I you know, you know one other interesting note I have. We're going to get to your uh, total strokes gain chart. Nobody in this field's finished top ten in the last two years here. Nobody. There's not, there's not one player <laughs> that's yeah to do it both years. It. You mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The last two, yeah, yeah last two, the the two times here. So um, I don't I don't even know what that says. I, I I don't even know how to break that down or help us betting on. But I just think it's interesting. <laughs> you have a tournament with the best players in the world, and none of these guys. Uh, have finished top 10. So let's take a look at that chart, the total strokes gains. Um, it's really coming into form. Uh, like we, we had all these, un, you know, kind of long shots. And this chart was like really throwing us off the beginning of the year, but now <laughs> it, it all is kind of regressed back to the mean. So let's take a look at strokes gain last three, six, and 12 months. Of course, it's uh, all the big name guys. A couple of notables that uh, I'm really interested in. What's your takeaway this week looking at this chart? Yeah, I mean, you're dead right about that. The first 17 tournaments, uh, there were five guys that were ranked in the top 10 uh, that won, right? And over the last uh, 22 tournaments, so I'm, I'm just I'm discounting the five alternate field events that there have been. Uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's been 15 out of the last 22 <laughs> PGA Tour events that have been winners from in the top 10. So, yes, the season heats up. When you get to that Florida swing and everybody starts playing, you know, regularly, the big events are there, the best fields are there, and then it starts to become, okay, only the best players are probably going to win. And, and this strokes gain chart is, of course, going to be exactly that. So there's no real surprises here other than this is, you know, I think both of us would rank who our top 10 going into this tournament is a lot, is probably different than what you see in this graphic because this is the top 10 of players and their numbers over the last 12 months. For example, the point there is Victor Hovland, you know, he, he won the, BMW and the the um, play, uh, not the Players Championship but the Tour Championship at the end of last season to win the FedEx Cup. He has one top ten finish this season, Andy. I cannot even fathom that. Right? How do you have that big of a fall off? Yeah, he's still lingering here because of how good that was. But that would that will change here shortly. He will not be on this list uh, much longer. But so he's a guy you can see it in the trends where the six months and three months trends have dropped quite a bit for him. In fact, his Last 12-month trend is much lower than it was just three months ago. Uh, but no surprises with Scotty and Xander leading the way. Uh, Rory, of course, Morikawa. The top four on the odds board are the top four in this chart. Then you got Aubert, who's been playing just very consistent, very great. Uh, Russell Henley's a sneaky guy that fits a lot of trends this week. Uh, and you don't really think about him because he's not the sexy name. He's not the guy winning. He's 14th in the world. He's a solo fifth at the Open Championship. You can see 
Uh, 2.09 strokes gain over just the last three months on average. So he is definitely a guy under the radar uh, for most people. And then I threw in a couple names at the bottom, guys that I think have really spiked in the last three months. Again, maybe they haven't been winners, although Aaron Rye, thanks Max Grazerman for handing Aaron Rye his first PGA Tour win. I'm sure we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but those guys have been very, very well, very consistent, let's say, over the last three months. And that's Corey Connors, Matsuyama. And Aaron Rye, even if they don't win, they might be worth looking at a, a leaderboard, top 10, top 20 type of a finish. But uh, no real surprises here, Andy. It's just hard to want to bet. You know, the Scotty, the Olympics is, is proof of Scotty's never out of the dang thing. <clears throat> that guy wasn't, didn't, didn't look like he had a chance to win at all. And then all of a sudden, what do you shoot on Sunday? 62, right? To win, to win out of nowhere. Um, so yep. I advise if you can. <laughs> if you don't want to bet Scotty this week, bet the without Scotty market because there, there's nothing more frustrating than having the right guy, but only losing to Scotty. So do pay attention to that. Most books have been offering those on a weekly basis, kind of because they need to. Uh, so do probably take a look at that as well. But that's your top 10 this week. And I do believe the winner will probably be one of these guys. I, you know what? If, what? You mentioned it. Can we look at that chart one more time? You said something really interesting. Like like if we were actually doing our rankings and not just like strokes gained, I got to tell you, Hovland's completely out of there. And Corey Collins Oh, yeah. He's, he's, on the, well, he, he's outside the top 50 right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Justin Thomas is out of there. What's that guy shown? Yep. Aaron Rye is one hundred percent in, and Thomas is out. Correct. Like, like no, Correct. no, no question about. What about Cameron? So, he's kind of like he is. He hasn't. You know, he's a top ten player in the I, world, but he really hasn't been playing that well. No, he really so, hasn't. I just don't. I, it, it just it does fall off a cliff. Like, who would you put yeah. in over Cantlay? I mean, you got That's Russell Hen Henley is already up there. I actually think I might put Tom Kim over Cantlay. I I think he's but he's inconsistent. You can't depend on that guy. Um, I there might be some, there might be some lower price guys. We'll get into a couple on uh, DraftKings darlings, but that's that's really interesting. Look at the total strokes gained, and then saying, well, but who would I rank? <laughs> who would I actually <laughs> might take not match up <laughs> in a head to head? Yeah, absolutely, might not match up. So, uh, good stuff there uh, for the total strokes gained. Uh, we have a really good special going on for the rest of the playoffs for Nick and myself. We're having a scorching hot year. So we're going to do three weeks of the playoffs. Buy one, get one. That's right. You can get all of my plays and all of Nick's plays for only $99. Uh, this is a fantastic deal. Uh, you're basically getting 33% off all of our plays. Uh, I've never had a losing season in golf, 12 and four in the last 16 plays. Uh, Nick's really been doing well with these uh, golf uh, uh, cross sport parlays that he's been adding yeah. in, and um, it's really, really a great special to finish off another profitable golf season. So um, you don't need a promo code; just go to my page or Nick's page, and for ninety nine bucks, you can get the next three weeks, and that includes all golf plays, all percentages. So if we have five percent plays, those will absolutely be included. wtbuzz slash nb or wtbuzz slash al. And if you guys could hit the like button and subscribe, leave us a comment. Tell us who you're liking in the playoffs here. Um, that just comment section, fantastic season so far. Like just really, <laughs> really happy and proud of you guys. Uh, you guys done really, really well with some of the picks that we've seen in there. So don't be a stranger. Leave us a comment and uh, hit the like button. And um, we've got a lot of videos coming out for college football and NFL season. So make sure you subscribe to the Wager Talk YouTube channel. Get notified when all of those videos come out daily. Uh, baseball plays as well. So looking forward to a big, big finish to the golf season as we get into the fall sports. All right, let's take a look at players that can trip you up. I got to tell you, Nick, I, I smoked players that can trip you up and DraftKings darlings last week. So players that can trip you up last week, all three of them missed the cut. I don't think I've done wow. that this year. Yeah, Siwoo, Lowry, and Spieth uh, all well missed the cut. So got a, got a little humble brag. Uh, so it's got a short field. <laughs> I'm only doing two players. I, I'm, I'm scorching hot take. I mean, Stephen A. Smith uh, level here. Number one player that could trip you up is Scotty Scheffler. And what are you talking about? Not a, I'm going he's going to finish outside the top 10. It has been one of the most amazing years for any golfer, uh, Scheffler's year. I think this is an absolute letdown spot. So he wins the Olympics. He was very emotional about it. And it was an amazing come from behind victory. I like What was his odds to start the round to win, to win that? It had to be kind of big. Um, so he yeah, gets a big yeah. emotional win. He's crying while the national anthem's being played. And he's there's not a lot of motivation for him this week. He's up almost 2,000 points on second place, Xander Shoffley. And he's up 3,400 points on third place, 
Roy McIlroy. So, Nick, literally, the only way that he's going to be down after this week is if Shoffley wins and if Scheffler gets arrested again, but they don't let him out <laughs> this time. <laughs> That's the only way that Scotty Scheffler will yes, not. Yes, there it is. Yep. <laughs> That's the only way that Scheffler is not going to be ahead um, in this in this field. Um, the other thing. 31st <laughs> last year, Miss Cut, he doesn't really, he has not shown that he plays good here at this course. Uh, obviously, his tee to green is fantastic. His putting hasn't been great. And I know he said that, you know, putting isn't that important, but for whatever reason, it's just not worked for him uh, the last couple of years here. So I just think there's a classic letdown spot coming off of the Olympics. It just felt like that Olympics really, really hit home with him. And let's face it, it's championship or bust. So, I'm not really sure Scheffler is going to really, really be into it this week because it's really about next week and, of course, uh, the, the week after. So I think if you're if you're looking for a letdown spot for Scheffler, I think this week is it. And I will venture to say I think he finishes outside the top 10. Uh, last guy I'm going to fade is Ludwig Bear. I'm just out on him for the rest of the playoffs. He has one top 10 finish in the last five tournaments. And he's being priced as a top six guy this week. Missed the cut at the Open Championship. Finished 18th at the at the Olympics, which uh, isn't great. T to green has been good, but his putting and around the green numbers have plummeted. They have been absolutely awful the last three months. Uh, he's plus 0 0.1 putting, and he's even around the green. So we got these small greens that he's never played on before. Uh, top six for uh, Ludwig Bear. I, I, I just... I don't know. I've watched him play the last few tournaments, and there's just something not right. I don't know if that knee injury is lingering, um, but it's just not been a good end of the the, the season for uh, Ludwig Bear. So he's going to be a guy I'm staying away from. So Scotty Scheffler and Ludwig Bear are two players this week that I think can trip you up. Let's take a look at an outright winner. Looking at a big-name guy. We talked about uh, probably going to come off that strokes gain chart. Who are you uh, focusing in on this week, Nick? Listen. It's funny that, you know, Scotty Scheffler, for a player that trips you up, a, a bad week for Scotty Scheffler is not making the top 10. Well, for anybody else, it's like, oh, top 10 is a great week. <laughs> He's like, oh, man, what a horrible week. Uh, and kudos to Andy for having to do that segment where it's easy to, you know, choose not to bet, as we said, Victor Hovland this week, but to choose not to bet Scotty Scheffler as a, as a guy to trip you up. And again, it doesn't mean he's going to play horribly. It just means it's not. there's no value, you know, in his number. Uh, it's it's hard to do, and, and you've been good with it, Andy. So kudos to you for going against Sky there. I love that. I, for my outright play, one of the top three uh, I was looking at this week. I, I agree with you on Scotty. If there's one of the three that might be a little bit, you know, off his game a little bit or slow or maybe the who cares effect, whatever, maybe it's Scotty. Xander is hard to fade ever. He's just too consistent. Rory has his ups and downs. And here's what I like about Rory, because I, I think Rory has a chance uh, to win this this week. You know, we all talk about, all his missed putt at the U.S. Open, and like he's playing horrible because he finished solo second. He did ha have that poor performance at the Open Championship where he missed the cut. In his defense, there was a pretty significant advantage in the tee time wave. He was on the wrong side of it, but because of his, you know, let's say elevated ex uh, expectations of where he finishes, it's easy to look past his other results and kind of go, "Man, he's not really playing that well." But he's got eight top fifteen finishes in his last nine starts, uh, aside from that Open that Open Championship and. He's got two wins. I know one was the partner event at the Zurich, but he also won the Wells Fargo uh, in his next start. So it's not like the guy's playing horribly. He just hasn't been necessarily closing the deal all the time. But at 10 to 1, I mean, honestly, I kind of look back over the last couple of seasons and look at Rory as a guy that in a field of 70, I, I, I think a 7 to 1, an 8 to 1 is kind of where you'd always see him, maybe even less sometimes. But to drift back as far as 10 to 1, is there really that much separation? between a Scotty uh, and a Xander and a Rory, maybe in just the ability, the actual closing ability right this second, but in potential and in, in, in pure skill set, I don't think there is. So I, of those guys, I thought he presented the best value this week. He's also a three-time FedEx Cup champion, right? So it just tells me this guy knows how to turn it on and win over this three, three, three tournament stretch. Now, usually that means he won the, the tour championship to get to that point, not necessarily this tournament, but he knows how to turn it on at this time of year. Uh, his biggest strength is his driver. I did mention, you know, that distance probably isn't the impo most important metric this week. But heck, if you're going to find the fairway and be 40 yards in front of somebody, that will help. Uh, but still, number one, strokes gained off the tee. Number two, strokes gained tee to green. Number three, total strokes gained. 
just screams to me that he's going to be in contention, right? And that's what we're looking for in an outright bet. And lastly, Rory has seven starts at this tournament. He, he hasn't won yet, but he does have four top 12 finishes, including a tie for third last year. So he's been close. Um, I just kind of look at Rory this week as the guy that's probably going to get passed on because he can't, he can't close the door, right? He can't win. He, it, it's like he's got this moniker about him now all of a sudden, even though he hasn't won a couple times this season. And of course, the guy can win. He's a past FedEx Cup champion. So 10 to 1. Uh, if you're going to look at the top three, I like Rory. And I do think it's going to be one of these top guys that wins. I don't think you can go, you know, you can have fun if you want to get sexy and go 50, 50 to 1 on a winner this week. It's not going to cash. It just isn't. So put all your, try to pick one or two guys near the top and put your eggs in that basket and then maybe look at some long shots in the, in the leaderboard market. But I think Rory has a very good chance this week. Love it. Let's take a look at DraftKings Darlings. Gives us a good chance to look at some uh, some underdogs. And it was fun. I I texted Nick. I one of the darlings last week was Grazerman. I was like, we had a chance to finally cash one. Uh, <laughs> DraftKings Darling to win. Literally thirty seconds later, he takes an eight on the hole and blows that up. But I had Aaron Rye as a, as another player in my DraftKings lineup. I'm so, not too shabby. Uh, not too shabby. It was, it was I wish good. we could put the uh, I wish we could put a screenshot of our text message up there because yeah, you were like, Hey, I got Greg Grazerman. it'd be the first time I ever won. And I, and then literally like one minute later, my text is, Did he just make an eight WTF? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep, the great <laughs> curse by me. I, I I offered to apologize to him on social media. <laughs> I was like, Listen, that was my fault. Uh, I get it. Uh, that was my fault. So, but yeah, so uh, yeah, I finished sixth out of two hundred people uh, in a tournament. So, awesome. um, yeah, that was that was good. So let's take a look at some uh, some lower price guys. Obviously, we're gonna get four rounds from all these guys. So looking at some upside. And I'll go with Mackenzie Hughes. He was a DraftKings darling. For us last week, finished 28th, got us really good solid weekend points. So I'll go back to him. This is an insane low price on Mackenzie Hughes. Like his upside's a little bit limited, but there's nobody around this 6,200 that I would rather have uh, than Mackenzie Hughes. Uh, this is a, a, a really, really solid, <laughs> solid price here. So I, I, I would jump on Mackenzie Hughes. Absolutely. This guy's finished 28th, 19th. 16th 46th uh his last four tournaments and he's being priced around guys like you know chris kirk and uh seamus power and nick taylor and you know oh, i haven't talked about any of those guys uh no i know so mckenzie <laughs> hughes at 6200 uh cameron davis at 6800 he missed the cut last week but honestly he'd been pretty good before that and he really likes the course we mentioned that nobody has finished top 10 the last two years but he's been one of the best he finished sixth and 13th the last two years here. So it's 6,800. I'll take the upside. Uh, it was an off week. The weather was terrible. So uh, might have been a good thing that he missed the cut um, and was able to, to focus on this week. So 6,800 is really good. And then Davis Thompson, not only is he a DraftKings darling, Nick, I would really look at this guy in the betting markets, maybe top 20s. Um, this is a guy we profited off of um, the last few weeks. And I think he's in line for a good finish here. Here's the thing about him. So he finished 46 at the Scottish Open and 66 at the Open Championship. Listen to his last four finishes in the U.S. 12th, 1st, 2nd, and 9th. So take Jeez. away those European take away those European events. That is like top five uh, finishes here. It's not been the best fields, but man, that is really, really tough to ignore. So because um, when you're looking at his finishes, you're like, well, he had those two tournaments. It's like, yeah, those were in Europe. For whatever reason, he's been playing great on uh, on U.S. soil. So so 7,400 for Davis Thompson. Absolutely. I will take uh, take him. We profited off of him in DraftKings, and I would really strongly look at him in head-to-head -head matchups as well as uh, maybe some top 20s because as Nick and I have laid out, I mean, you go look at some of these guys in the top 20, and I'm, I'm actually going to uh, bring talk about some of these guys after Nick does a top 20 selection. There's just so many holes in these in the games of these guys that are up at the top. So, um, you know, it's it's top heavy for like the top three, but man, there's a lot of room for guys to sneak in um, in the top 20. So let's take a look at a top 20 play here, uh, Nick, and we're looking at a guy getting pretty good odds. You've talked about him. Quite a bit um, this year. He's made quite a few appearances in this segment. Uh, Sepp Straka, you like at top 20, plus 175. What do you like about him? Yeah, so it's kind of – I look back at when I've been picking Sepp, and it's kind of the same time or same, like, I, I guess when I when I rank accuracy <laughs> off the team as more important metric than distance, that's when I go to Sepp, right? This tournament, I'm doing that again. 
Uh, he's not a long hitter by any means, but he is the most accurate driver on tour. Number one, driving accuracy, 72% fairways hit. Again, with the small greens in play this week, I just think that premium of being able to get uh, an iron flush on a, your ball from the fairway is just going to add that little bit of an edge over force uh, that should help him you know, finish. If he was going to be a top 30 or top 40 guy, maybe it's that 10, 10 places higher because he's got a couple times throughout each round where he's he's in the fairway and that he's able to hit a green because of that. Uh, you look at some of his uh, results you know, this year, it's been great. I mean, he, he since the players in March, he's missed three cuts in 15 starts, but he also has nine top 25 finishes, including four top tens. And a lot of those tournaments are kind of like this type of a tournament, again, where, you know, you got to keep the ball in play and you're trying to, to be very accurate. He's He ranks 11th in the field in strokes gained approach over the last six and 12 months, just tells you how solid he's been with his irons. Uh, but it also helps, again, when you're hitting <laughs> most of your balls from the fairway. Uh, and you know, in the shorter term, he's even a little bit better. He's eighth in the last three months in that, in that category. Um, again, he, for me, it's, it's all about the fact that I think he's going to be in play his weakness and he is his putting and it can be his short game at times. I'm just waiting both of those, those metrics a little bit lower this week. I'm not ignoring him. I'm just waiting him a little bit lower. So I'm, I'm, I'm not factoring that in. I'm hoping the other two high metrics for him, which is his approach game and his off the tee game will, you know, make up for that. Uh, deficiency around the greens. Uh, and finally, this is Straka's third start Start here. Uninspiring finish last year. It was 63rd last season out of the same 70 players, but he finished runner-up, solo runner-up in 2022. So hoping he can bring those vibes again this week. Uh, and again, just hoping that, that his driver alone uh, could, could keep him in, into contention just because he's avoiding some of the the, the trouble areas and, and hitting a little bit more green. So, Seb Straka plus 175. Uh, DraftKings or FanDuel, I think, is a pretty good price for a top 20 finish this week. Nice. Uh, I'm going to go through kind of a little lightning round where we talk about some guys that we haven't mentioned in the show previous. But before we do that, if you guys could make sure you hit the like button. If you haven't done that, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And we got to bring up the buy one, get one special for myself and Nick. $99 get my plays and Nick's plays, all golf plays. For this week, next week, and the final week of the playoffs on a 12-4 and four run. Yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, finish, go back to what you were going to say, but I'm going to mention in, uh, or in my pack right now alone is a 5% play, which is normally you know $35 on Perfect. its own. So there you go. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's a $35 program. play that, that, that you're already uh, getting in there. So it includes all percentages, all plays. If we have cross-sport parlays that involve golf, you're going to get those as well. Never had a losing season in golf since joining Wager Talk, so take advantage of that. WT.buzz slash AL or WT.buzz slash NB. No promo code needed. Uh, just go to either of our profile pages and uh, check those out. Uh, let's go through a couple guys um, that we haven't really mentioned uh, throughout the show, and I really just – I, I didn't want to give you time to like look up their stats or anything. I just want like your first <laughs> overall like, like take yeah, uh, reaction. Uh, okay. Yeah, Billy Horschel. The guys got finished second and seventh the last couple last couple tournaments. <laughs> Do we see lightning in a bottle again from him going into the playoffs? Is it Billy Horschel, a past FedEx Cup champion? By the way, he is. Uh, he caught. He, caught so he, does, he knows how to turn turn on when he needs to. Of course, that was a that was a different yep. Billy than back then. Listen, I. He ain't going to win this tournament, but I, I do think his good play continues. There's no reason to think it won't. So I think he's worth a, a top 10 or top 20 probably, more realistic kind of a, a finish this week. But I, I won't be betting to win, but I like the leaderboard. Uh, falling off the place, the, the the face of the planet award, it, it's probably Matthew Fitzpatrick or Max Homa. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah. Like, what what happened wow. to those two guys this, this, this year? Like, Max Homa can't find a fairway, can't find a green. Uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick's just been MIA. I mean, what has happened to these two? You're absolutely right about both of them. It's funny. I didn't even look at their names once yet this week. And so you just said them right now. Uh, so I have been unconsciously avoiding both of them for those reasons. I mean, I don't know. I mean, this is what golf is, right? It's a it's a game of ebbs and flows. And it's very rare to find a guy like Scotty and Xander that can play as consistent as they have for as long as they have without having little dip in form. So obviously the potential is there for those guys to come back. I will not be betting either one of them. Maybe they might be fade material depending on matchups available from some books. I haven't looked at that yet, but they are definitely not guys I'm going to be looking at to bet on. Uh, have we seen the best of Justin Thomas? Do you think he can have a resurgence or do you think this is just kind of who he is at this point? It feels like the uh, the boys club, right? Him and who is it? Him and Steve and Fowler. 
Father, time like, is undefeated. It, it just feels like it's over. They've, you know, maybe they prioritize having a little bit too much fun for a little bit of time. And in that time, the best players in the world have surpassed them. I just don't know if they're going to be able to. It takes a lot of work, a lot of dedication to get back to that elite level. And I don't know that they're going to be able to go back to that. Um, I think they're pretty comfortable. I think they've had decent careers, right? And I think they're going to continue to play well at times. But I think it's probably unlikely they get back to the the best form of themselves, uh, honestly, at all, ever coming up. So sorry to say, wish I'd like to see them. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, for for you Game of Thrones uh, fans, a Lannister always pays his debts. Uh, apparently, a, a Tony Finau does not always pay his pay his debts. What's your take on Tony Finau? What in the world is going on with him and his career right now? I feel like this is kind of feel like this may not end well for him. This entire situation. This sounds a lot more serious than some going to sweep it under the the rug thing. I think he's been playing good, but I, I don't know what to make of this whole situation about people saying that he owes them all this money for investing on, on him early yeah i mean that's I, I would think you know i only know a little bit of the surface level uh information on this on the story i'm guessing some of the viewers probably don't know a lot about it uh but it is kind of one of those things that golf is mental and if you're thinking at all about it and not your your performance at, a, a, at any sort of tournament it can it can factor in it can weigh on you now he's had he's actually had pretty solid results uh through the summer months in you know the u.s open he missed the cut at the open but he was great at the u.s open he's been great at, you know a couple other signature events so his approach game is really elite andy and as long as you have that going for you you're always going to be you know in the mix but to get the wins and to be you know the best of the best you got to have a clear mind you got to be 100 percent focused on what you're doing and if anything's going on in his mind uh, about that or thinking about that, it's just gonna it's just gonna inhibit him from from getting to that level. But um, so far, it hasn't really like it's not like he's finishing Hoblin bad <laughs> or, or yeah, right. Thomas bad, he's bad, right? So he, he's he's managing it okay. <laughs> uh, Sahith Gala, I feel like I I just I want a little more. Like I feel like this is the year where everyone was like, "Oh, Thigala is going to put himself in that mix," yeah. And it's just like, yeah, it's like he's good. We just haven't quite gotten there. Um, I mean, listen, thirteenth and thirteenth the last couple of years here, so maybe this week he can find himself up at up at the the leaderboard. What's your take on the year that uh, Figal has had? Yeah, I've been on a few times this year, and I feel like I was just late. Like he had the great Florida swing; it was kind of good earlier in the in the season, and I think I started betting on him right after that. And then that's kind of where he kind of became very inconsistent. Uh, he still had a few top ten finishes uh, since you know March, but he's also had a, a bunch of uninspiring finishes finishes around 50th place is three missed cuts so like yeah the consistency of who, who what he is and where he is especially in a field like this i just there's there's better options i think that at least are more consistent that you can rely on a little better he is really a gamble if you're gonna bet on him yeah i'll uh, just close out with a couple of kind of interesting just finishes a uh, second second 13th 21st 26th 31st 21st uh those are the last seven finishes of uh, max grazerman Guy's been guy's been actually pretty good. I know he had the collapse, but uh, really good. Uh, last year's DraftKings darling uh, winner of the year was Eric Cole. He's quietly kind of come on strong. Seventh, thirty first, forty six, seventh, six. He got off to a terrible start, uh, so he's been really good. And then yep. I'm Aaron Rye first. I think it was about seventy yeah. fifth. But then before that, fourth, seventh, second, nineteenth, fourteenth. This guy's playing top ten golf on tour. Uh, yeah, he just is. Um, and then uh, I, my dark horse going to the playoffs is Sung J M. I know he finished forty first last week. It's so weird with all the rain and everything. Before that, man, seventh, fourth, twelfth, third, eighth, ninth. Not too many guys <laughs> are playing a whole lot better than 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 Sung J M. And we've seen him in past when he gets dialed in and he's hitting the ball well and he gets the putter working. This guy is a, he's he can be a top five guy as well. So uh, those are just a few. But yeah. yeah. If they, th- think about those days, you know, Fowler just had his second kid. Smiley's doing commentating. Spieth can't make the cut. Justin Thomas isn't even a top 20 guy. It's a, uh, oh man, the time time flies there, Nick. So the times they uh, are changing. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. So uh, besides golf, what else do you have up at Wager Talk? I know we got uh, EPL and soccer getting ready to kick into full swing. Yes. So the European soccer seasons kick off this weekend. Premier League begins uh, this weekend and right now have a couple of different promos. If you just want to get Premier League plays for the season, uh, Kevin and I have a, another BOGO deal where we're getting both of us for the entire season two ninety nine. So that's a really, really good deal. You get both, both of us all season long. Uh, I also have a one-year all-access, so that's Premier League, golf, of course, uh, MLS, and then any Champions League plays. I don't cover every um, European league on client plays. I'll do those free plays. But those four big leagues, uh, $5.99 right now. Normally, it's $7.99 for a year. It's $5.99, so 200 bucks off. You can get, get involved before the kickoffs to the soccer seasons, which, again, start this weekend. So no promo code needed, just both available on my page at wagerdrop.com. Love it, guys. Uh, PGA Tour playoffs are finally here. Thanks, everyone, for joining us throughout the year. Let's finish the year strong. Good luck on all your plays, and we will see everyone next week on Tea Time.